basically, if Jim Morrison was the key to the doors, Ray Manzarek, our guest tonight, must have been the latch to open it. Um, you can't listen to Doors music without instantly recognizing the keyboard work. And Mr. Manzarek, we're very happy to have you here today. Nice to be here. Thank you. Um, basically, um, why don't you tell us what was the experience of being the Doors? Oh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Basically, I'd say that it was a lot of fun and very intellectual and very artistic. That's about all I can say about it. What else can you say? It's all in the music, the music and the poetry and, uh, and the videos. It's all there. And that's about it. Okay. Uh, this is a group that has obviously inspired a great number of people. Um, the Farfisa organ has become such a popular instrument, partially due to the fact that... Well, that's an interesting misconception. I always played a Vox. Okay. I never played a Farfisa. Okay. I'm not sure exactly why people think I played a Farfisa. But they I sound similar. Oh, they they sound are exactly similar. the same, except the Farfisa has a curved top. I couldn't put the piano bass on top of it. I needed an organ that had a flat top, and the Vox was the only one that had a flat top. That's okay. why I played the Vox. Otherwise, I probably would have played a Barbisa. Who knows? You know, they sound exactly the same. They're both cheesy little organs. <laughs> you know? That's pretty interesting. And of course, you know, the psychedelic sound of the late '60s exactly. and all the garage bands. Hey, it's like, you got to have that psychedelic, yes. uh, cheesy organ sound, absolutely, right? Absolutely, right. couldn't be without it. Synthesizers <laughs> are just not the same thing, are they? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. Um, why don't we talk about um, a project that I believe was something that was very special to you, and that being the American Prayer album. A uh, good poetry album, Jim's Poetry. That was, uh, uh, we put that together, John and Robbie and I put that together in no 75, 6, 77, somewhere around there. Uh, and it was our, uh, we finished Jim's Thanks, poetry Rob. album for him. He recorded uh, the poetry on his last birthday on this planet, December 8, 19, December 8, 1970. As a birthday present to himself, he went in the recording studio and recorded all of the poetry he had. A batch of stuff. And we took it and cut it up and uh, did some editing and you know, allowed spaces for music and uh, put Doris music to uh, Jim's poetry. And it's a, it's a brilliant album. Just That's what I wanted to say. It's one of my favorite Doors albums of all. And yet, for some reason, why do you think that that album never like, really caught on? I mean, it was the essence well, of Well, because Morrison it had, Doors. probably had uh, poems like Ode to My Cock. <laughs> Can we say that yes. on TV? Yes, yes we can. We're cables. <laughs> Sore and crucified. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had he had dirty words in it. Well, obviously yeah. the radio stations wouldn't embrace it. But well, then there's other stuff. There, there's other stuff in the uh, Yellow Woman bits and uh, the Riders in the Storm. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that uh, don't have dirty words, but there's plenty of dirty words in it. So if you like smut, you'll like an American <laughs> prayer. On the other hand, if you like poetry, perhaps you'll like an American prayer too. Who knows? Yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful album. It came out great. I'm sure Jim is very great. pleased with it. Or what do you, do you think he even cares? When you die, do you give a damn about what happens here on this planet? I'd like to think that you go on enough to, to have a certain conception of what's happening. And if something happens in your favor, I would like to think that you would care. Otherwise, it would seem to be a waste, wouldn't it? No, it's not a waste because it's for the living. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's true. And it, everything goes on. The dead go into the energy. Right. You know, Jim is in the energy. When, he's the, when, when you merge with the energy that is the creation and, and the foundation of all things, then you become everything. Mm -hmm. And anyway, that's psychedelic. <laughs> um, <laughs> as were the doors. Um, okay, now why don't, why don't we talk very briefly about the movie, obviously it's a, it's a hot topic these days. Now. Yes, it is a hot topic. Isn't and it? Yeah. Um, if, if you could tell us what you like and what you don't like about it. Well, I didn't like the, the film. It was a bad portrayal of Morrison. Uh, it was Morrison as a drunk, you know, bottle. He's got a bottle in his hand all the time, walking around <coughs> slugging out of a whiskey bottle. He never did that. Nobody could do that. Uh, the way the character in the movie, the way Val Kilmer drinks, uh, you would die. And Jim did, but you'd die right then and there. You can't. Jim didn't drink like that, you know. He, he drank, but uh, he wasn't a, a ranting, raving drunk like that. Only, you know, why would I be in a band with a guy like that? I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking, 
If this is the if this is the way Jim was in real life, I'd have walked out of the band after the first six months. Said, "Hey, man, I'll see you." Mm -hmm. He was much more sensitive and artistic and poetic. He was funny, and he was not a jerk. Oliver Stone made Morrison out to be a jerk. Val Kilmer did a good job, and the concert scenes are very exciting as well photographed. But uh, it doesn't have the spiritual essence of The Doors. It's not. It's not psychedelic. Mm -hmm. Oliver Stone is. Uh, how shall I say it delicately, is a white powder man. And it's a white powder movie. It's not a psychedelic movie. Okay. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, the stuff you've done since The Doors, and you've done an awful lot. I had a son. <laughs> I'm talking about artistically. Well, well I guess well, you can consider a, that artistically. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> No, a lot I mean, easier for me than it was for Dorothy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, as far as uh, things like the solo projects... Uh, I did a couple of albums, produced a couple of albums for X, um, a rock band from uh, punk rock, new wave, whatever you want to call them, from Los Angeles. Uh, did four albums with them. Uh, did an album. Played on some. They played on one of their albums. I did an album called Myself, called The Golden Scarab. The uh, whole thing started with rock and roll, now it's out of control. A uh, brief uh, a band called Night City for a, a short while with a, uh, a bunch of guys from the Midwest, actually, who uh, all migrated up to California. And one Englishman on uh, bass, Nigel Harrison. Paul Warren, great guitar player, he plays a lot with Richard Marks now. Jimmy Hunter was a drummer, and uh, Noah James was the singer. And, uh, Noah was out of uh, Iowa, and the other two guys, were uh, Jimmy and uh, Paul Warren, were from. In Detroit. I'm from Chicago, grew up in Chicago, moved out to California. Uh, I did an album with Philip Glass, Carmina Burana, classical work by uh, Carl Orff, and we did a uh, sort of an electronic adaptation. That must be pretty cool. And then a bunch of uh, uh, Doors videos, and all the Doors uh, Dance on Fire, I directed that, uh, Doors Live at the Hollywood Bowl, and then a new one that's coming out uh, called The Soft Parade. And in that, you will see the real Jim Morrison, as opposed to the phony Jim Morrison that Oliver Stone put in front of you. Uh, will it be a lot of like concert footage? As concert well as footage, performance footage, interview footage, Jim predicts the future. you find that very interesting when you hear what Morrison has to say about uh, what he thinks, how he thinks people will make music. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that. This is like 68, 69, and uh, what he talks about has indeed come to pass. He was very in touch. No yeah, way. very good guy, man. Very, very good. Good human being. And you'll see Jim. You'll see the real Jim. You know, I think the soft parade will show you the real Jim Morrison. Well, the real thing always defines itself much better than a portrayal anyway. I sure. Mean, sure, exactly. That's, that's, a, that's a given. Uh, what about other film projects? Anything, like, I mean, we know that, that Jim was really big in film. Any any film projects in the works for Raymond's Eric? Well, for me, yeah, I'm trying to uh, put a uh, finished a script, uh, trying to put a film together, to make a make a low budget movie. L.A. Woman is uh, what I'm in the process of doing right now, and of course working with uh, Michael McClure, doing uh, poetry or poetry and piano improvisations, as we did uh, right here in Cleveland, just this very evening. This very. Um, Two more things I wanted to talk about. Echo and the Bunnymen, The Lost Boys. Oh, the Lost Boys. Right, strange. right, right. right. Uh, Joel Schumacher, the director of uh, the film, called me and asked me if I would uh, do a remake, uh, produce a remake uh, with Echo and the Bunnymen of uh, People Are Strange. So uh, I went over to uh, England and uh, had a great time with them, Ian and all the rest of the guys, Les and uh, poor Pete Best. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> poor Pete Best. <laughs> yeah, poor him too. Yeah. He's a drummer too. Anyway, Pete, the drummer uh, from Echo and the Bunnymen, a wonderful guy, uh, died in a uh, motorcycle accident uh, somewhere uh, right outside of Manchester on the way home, heading up to uh, uh, Liverpool. A lot and, of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, poor, poor guy, man, what a tragedy it was. He was a wonderful human being, a really good drummer. So working with Echo and the Bunnymen was a great deal of fun, real good guys. And I played a few gigs with them here and there in New York and Los Angeles and whatnot. And that's uh, what I've been doing. And he's got a book? No, I don't have a book, that's the other guy. 
I'm sorry, I think they were looking at me. Uh, no, that was okay. one of the things Many I did want to Many people me with John Densmore. No, there Many is... people have said, I like your book, Ray. And I said, that's great, but I haven't written a book. And they say, aren't you Ray Van Zarek? I said, yes. But didn't you write a book? No, that's John Densmore. Um, one of the things I did want to talk about was Wonderland. Wonderland Avenue, Danny Sugarman's book, yeah, right. Dan, Danny tells us about his life as uh, with the Doors and then his life with heroin and the monkey on his back, boy. And if you want to see a cautionary tale about drugs, ooh, we do not get involved with that heroin. That stuff is deadly, boy. That monkey will hook you. That stuff just hooks you. Yeah, yeah, it almost killed him. You know, the fact that he's still alive today is a miracle. And uh, in the book, he talks about his heroin addiction. And he's, uh, you know, He's not ashamed to share his pain with the audience, people who read the book. I think it's a very, uh, very proud and open thing that he's done. And a very important thing to do things like that, too. Yeah. Ooh, stay off the heroin, stay off the cocaine, uh, crack, good lord, any of those white powders. That white powder stuff, that's the worst stuff in the world for you. A friend of mine said, uh, he said, do no white powder. He said, that even includes sugar. He said, anything that's distilled down to the white powder. It's all the good stuff, all the natural stuff is taken out of it. And you, you're left with this really sort of artificial, dangerous product. And if you start consuming that stuff, shooting it into your veins, you know, up your nose, even taking it into your body in the form of sugar. You, you know, I eat sugar. This guy was uh, doing a thing of anti-sugar. He said, stay away from all the white powders. So that's a good lesson, you know, I mean, for what, for what it's worth. If, if, if I can say anything to you out there, uh, stay away from all those white powders. Lay off the crack. Holy cow. That's something that drives you crazy. crazy. That's the only thing I fear more than heroin is crack. But they're both. They're both addictive. They take over. Mm -hmm. You're not in control. Absolutely. They take over, and then you're the slave. Absolutely. And you're we've fool. seen... And, and we've seen so many wonderful talents disappear because of this stuff, and it's like, it is really... It's terrible. Not only talent, just human beings on the street. I mean, you see guys walking down the street, they're like zombies, you know, crack zombies. It's terrible. For what? What's the high? I mean, I, I don't get it. What, what's the high? Was it 15 minutes of pleasure? Or yeah, is it that pleasurable? Go work out. <laughs> you know, run around the block or something. You know, right. make love. Right. That's a hell of a lot more fun. Absolutely. And that sounds like a good place to end it. All right. We'll do that. Very good.